Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Mark. And I'm John. Welcome to Silver Sound Guitar. Today we're going to go over some questions that we've been asked about picking. Fun times. Ah! <laughs> okay, so I think it's best to just say this. I actually, we both went to the same college. We both had a lot of the same professors. And yep. one of our professors that we had hounded me about right hand technique when I was like a sophomore mm. in music, right? It was. It was like, well, do this. And I kept thinking to myself, nah, I want to I wanna do all these, like, let me, let me get all these pretty sounds. I just, mm, let me, like, get all over the neck. And what I realized later in life, after I've had more yes. experience, <laughs> right, yeah. was that she was 150% correct. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, right-hand technique is one of the most underrated things. I think we focus so much on the flashy stuff, the hammer-ons and the pull-offs, and learn the scales and arpeggios and all that, but it's that control in the right-hand technique that really allows you to be accurate with your, your picking and your speed, but also it gives you that opportunity to really dig into your instrument and create real expressive lines. And so having an idea of where to put your right hand and how to attack in the first place changes everything. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the first thing that I wish I would have known when I was playing was thinking about this like a boat going through a, a water. Interesting. Right? Is because, I mean, think about yeah. this. Think about yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. When you're sitting here and you're playing, you know, and, and, and what's great about this, yeah. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your shot in on this too, because we were yeah. both just kind of talking about this. Why would you play like this, John? I have no idea. But There's notice so what much happens. resistance. Yeah. Look at this. It's like a, it's like a bow and arrow over here, dude. Yeah, you you pull on that and you get that yeah. Like it makes it super hard to play when you're kind of you're attacking it totally flat like that. That's just I can't and not only not only can I not do that, it just doesn't feel natural. So let's let's talk about that natural feel on your guitar. Yeah, so I think first off, you want to think about hand placement. Now, when you're looking at your pick as well, you kind of have to think about how you're going to hold your pick. And for a mm -hmm. lot of my students, uh, some of them prefer this two-handed approach. That's kind of classic Eddie Van Halen style. Uh, for most of my students, though, I would say the best way to start would be to kind of create your hand like you're going to karate chop something. You know, you're going to break some blocks or something like that. <laughs> you know, I love it. Uh, but here then kind of bring it in almost like you're going to make a fist. And you'll see how this nail is kind of pointed straight towards the fretboard or straight towards the strings, and that's where you're going to put the pick. The pick is going to rest right there, and then you're going to put your thumb on top of it. That feels really tense at first, so kind of shake your wrist out, and that'll give you a good place to you hold ever, that You pick. ever done, like, the, the talking Oh, that's a great it's way. Totally, yeah. like, it is, so yeah. it's like, it's like It's like making a fist, but, like, the talking one, and you flatten it out a little bit more with the knuckles, right? Hello, Mark. Uh, yeah. And, well, and, and, and that, I mean, you're looking for less resistance, right? Right. So you want to you want to keep that kind of loose there, too. A lot of people really try to lock the thumb. I can always tell my students are holding their pick too hard when the thumb kind of starts to turn white right there. So can you keep give your a, hand loose. Can you give us an example of locking it too hard with the thumb versus not? Well, so what happens when you do that, like you were saying, it kind of creates that extra resistance. So even in this position... Like, you can hear how much tension that causes. Right. By holding that loose, I actually have more control over the pick and the dynamics. Interesting, interesting. So let's do, let's do two of these for you, too, just so you can get both of those. Uh, let's do a clean guitar on this one. Yeah, that helped. So if we do that, what you can see here is, like, again, if I'm holding that thumb really tight, and even including a pick angle, we'll talk about that in a minute, um, you can hear that as I play something. So if you if you kind of hear that in your own playing and you hear how that string is popping, mm -hmm. a lot of times it can be you're just choking the life out of the pick. Relax that right hand a little bit. It should be able to move just a little bit like that kind of in your, in your right hand. Wow, and then nice. as you do that, like then it actually gives you the ability to control those dynamics. So even if you're just kind of playing through a scale, Just by that extra control, you can put a little extra force into it and create so more dynamics there. So you talked you talked a little bit about being able to being able to see kind of like um, 
the angle on this one, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, what I usually do is I'll take this and I twist it just a little bit here, maybe 15 degrees. Yeah, so you kind of rotate it forward. And for me, I start, and this is really easy because of because of the strat layout, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've got two pickups here. Right. I usually use this as kind of like my fence line, right? So mm. I'll start here, and, I, and when I and when I come down, I end at the other pick or at the other pickup. Right? Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really have a whole lot of wiggle room, which is fine because I don't want to be all over this thing like that. Like, yeah. I don't. I I want. I want that consistency, right? And I'm noticing too, like your movement's really minimum. How do you how do you gauge that with between the strings? I think I try to keep my hand, you know, obviously thinking about like the way that the, that the guitar is designed, right? Mm -hmm. We've got this this part back here that's that's a little bit curved. Just I keep my forearm planted there, and I don't really let it move too much, honestly. Right. Um, I used to get way more aggressive, especially when I was doing open chords, mm -hmm. right? And and I would use that. I would use my elbow as more of the pivot point, and, right. and as I, I became uh, more, I, I would say, um, you know, when I noticed the technique that I was using, I became, um, you know, more fixated on going. How can I keep this hand? from moving and it doesn't end up being a wrist movement it's still that elbow on those bigger chords mm -hmm. but I'm end, I end up using the guitar itself as, as a landing pad to kind of pivot that okay yeah yeah that's interesting yeah and even when you're going in between those individual strings you, you kind of keep that movement to a minimum right so you're you're kind of looking at not not going past the string next to it essentially yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, th I, think, that's, I think that's super crucial, right? Um, I think one of the big things that, that we get asked a lot is like, well, how can, I, how, can I, how can I get this hand to be faster, right? And I think, I think this is the misconception, mm. you know? It's like yeah. you need to focus. This hand gets neglected like crazy when it comes to guitar technique. I Absolutely. don't know a lot of people who um, preface by saying, in order to be a fast guitar player, you should work on this hand. In order to have an act, you know, articulate notes, in order to, to right. have things that sound great, focus on this because we're all fixated on being able to get fast fingers, right? Right. So how do you how do you like what do you what's your approach? You know, when you when you have a student like that who goes, dude, I really want to get like some super fast chops, and you notice right away that maybe they've got a really good scale hand. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know, but but this is just not working. So wh what do we do to fix this? Right. A lot of times I find like students have those left hands, like, uh, and I've got a few now that have a whole bunch of speed there. The trick is like, and it's kind of this is gonna suck to say, but you kind of have to slow it down again <laughs> because <laughs> and nobody wants to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> because you have to. What happens is you get out of sync. This hand ends up being faster than this hand, mm -hmm. and in order to fix that you kind of have to focus on this hand for a little bit until it catches up. And ultimately, this yeah. hand will get a little bit faster than that hand, and then it's kind of this, Well, it's you the age-old hammer-on pull-off as well, right. right? When you first start learning those techniques, I can tell you right now, everybody is really good at hammer-ons. And then pull-offs become neglected. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then you have to slow exactly. it down in order to get, you know, that... And so you can get the consistency on it. And I think that's what we're talking about, yeah, is exactly. making sure that we have that right hand, left hand synchronization. And in order to get that, you do have to start by slowing it down. But if you're really trying to push for speed, what I always have my students do is start out with, you know, that basic four finger exercise, the really... Yeah, let's like, take a peek at that. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is, this is the one that you've probably done a bajillion times anyway, but just that, uh, that real steady kind of... all the way makes, up makes and then the helicopter noises right yeah exactly <laughs> so the and the tendency is here when you're thinking about this the first thing that you should be doing is making sure that every single note only sounds when you want it to sound so really focus on that left hand right hand synchronization i tell my students start super slow can you play it at 40 beats per minute well and do you use a metronome i think is the right other, is the other question so you know, like and, like and to your point, with the metronome, there's no way to know that you're getting faster if you're not using a metronome. <laughs> it's like... But it, my internal clock is perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you yes. it's not. <laughs> well, and even so, like, if you think about a runner, a sprinter, right? Yeah. Usain Bolt isn't going to go do sprints and not take times. Yeah, true. Because then he has no idea what he needs to improve or how to improve it. So it's the same for us. If you're trying to build speed, you have to know where you're starting in order to progress. So start super slow. 
and then bring it as fast as you can and then go get to the point where things are going to go completely off the rails mm -hmm. and then dial it back a little bit. And what I like to do for my students too is realize when you're working on the speed and the synchronization, you don't have to go across all six or seven strings, but just take one string and play that all the way across and just get on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So now when you're using the metronome, you can play these in 16th notes. And then you're able to start building that speed and synchronization and help bring all that together. Dude, those are excellent points, excellent points. And hopefully, hopefully this video helps you guys. I mean, I know our biggest thing is we just want everybody to be really good at guitar. Uh, we want everybody to play guitar. Uh, that's, right. that's what our school started with, right? So, um, you know, we do everything from virtual lessons to um, creator, you know, like YouTube stuff to band consultations and recordings. Um, you know, if you guys are looking for any lessons, go to silversoundguitar.com, hit us up. Hopefully we'll be able to talk to you about where you're at and, and make you some progress. Um, I guess until then, happy practicing. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time.